Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be reviewing a product that we've been waiting literally years for. I think we put in a pre-order in September of 2021. And what I'm really excited about is to see if this one product alone can change my entire perception of the RED ecosystem. Now, what is this product? It is the Breakthrough Filters RF to PL mount for the DSMC3 system a la Raptor Komodo. Now, what's interesting about this is it's a cartridge-based RF to PL system that has variable ND as well as several other filters. And today, we're gonna be talking about the pros and the cons, and if it does in fact change my mind about RED cameras. So let's get into it. All right, so what is it? Well, it's a RF to PL mount that works on all the DSMC3 cameras, plus it should work on any RF mount camera as well. Now, it's a cartridge-based system that comes with several filters. Today, we're gonna be talking about the variable ND, some hard stop NDs, we're gonna be talking about some streak filters, polarizers, and I'm sure they're coming out with a bunch of other filters as well. What's cool about this is it mounts directly behind the lens and should make your workflow a little bit faster. Now, I'm excited about this system because of the variable ND specifically, because when it was announced, it was supposed to be a very, very, very high quality variable ND. Personally, as a working DP, after working with cameras like the C500 Mark II, the Venice, the Mini, the Mini LF, once you've used internal NDs, you really don't ever wanna go back. Your workflow on set is so much faster. You don't have to carry around ND filters, pouches, this and that and the other thing. It just makes everything so much quicker. And this one thing, literally one thing, is a huge part of why I've kind of moved away from RED as a shooter myself, um, despite their image looking so good and having so much functionality. So what are we testing today? Today we're gonna be testing, is the quality of the variable ND as good, better, worse than what I deem really, really, really good IRNDs. So we're gonna test these against the Tokina IRND set, kind of go one to one, apples to apples. We're going to color balance them directly to a chart and see how they measure differently. We're also gonna set them to a very standard, just preset white balance and see the color difference between the two at varying degrees of uh, stop on the filter. Now the other thing we're gonna test is the hard stops that come with these as well. Then we're gonna jump into testing some things like the true streak filters and some other uh, polarizers and things like that and just get a feel for how the whole system is. So let's talk about the pros. So a lot of really great things about this RF to PL mount. It is built like a tank. It is really great. Not to mention where the filters sit is very, very, very far back. We have a lot of lenses here at the rental house Every single one of them fits minus one set so far, and that is these Viltrox Epic Full Frame 133s. And as you can see, it's not really a surprise, look how deep the flange depth is on this lens. We measured it uh, in American measurement. It's about a one and an eighth inch deep element, and that's really, really deep. So feel good that almost any lens you put on this mount is going to work no problem. Now, another really great thing is the ease of use of pulling these cartridges in and out. The system clicks in, feels very robust, very solid. The carrying cases they give you to store them are also really, really nice material. Click in, feel very solid and sturdy, which is really nice when you're dealing with glass all the time. Um, it's, you know, even ND filters come in soft pouches. It weirds me out, it stresses me out in the soft cases. These feel very robust, like you're not gonna break anything. I will say the fact that they are a little bit small when you're changing them out feels a little bit awkward if you don't have a hand, but really don't have that much changing when you're on set if you are using the variable, so it's not that big of a deal. Now, let's talk about the variable ND because this is a big pro in my opinion. This thing is a, a 0.45 all the way to a 3.3, which is a huge range in stop and it's mostly usable. We'll see in our tests here how far you can go, but I remember for a long time, the strongest ND I had in my set was a 1.5, and this thing looks great way up into the two plus range. Uh, starts to have some issues after that, but 
all in all, it is usable and it's really great to have that much ability on set. Now, the other thing that's kind of a pro in this is it is variable and you can use your finger to kind of feather the wheel. Um, and in my opinion of using other camera systems, it's actually really finite and easy to adjust and it is, as soon as you stop, it stops. It's not like you're turning a dial and waiting for electronic numbers to catch up. It's very easy to roll this uh, if you're doing iris pulls or something to simulate an iris pull, if you want to adjust exposure on the fly, it's a really easy way to do. And I think that's actually really beneficial. And the first time I've actually really had that as an option on set. And I think I really, really enjoy having that much flexibility with the exposure on finite movements that I control myself. I really, really like that approach. The other thing is since the stop is so great, you know, 0.45 to 3.3, actually never changed the filter all day on set. I kind of just left it in all day and never had to go to a clear um, shooting on the Raptor, which is really, really cool. Uh, we did uh, a deal where we shot three different scenes for an actor and we used this to test and it was really nice. In a varying degrees of lighting and scene choices, we just got to leave it in all day and play with it, shoot wide open, shoot deep. It was really, really nice to have that flexibility. Another pro of this system is that it's cheaper than RED's new alternative that they're just now coming out with. So RED's new RF to PL mount that does have END uh, is 3,500 bucks. This is 1,500. So you do save quite a bit of money. You do lose the functionality of having metadata pass through, but maybe that's not important to you. And if it's not, it's a great price. So. We're gonna get into some testing. We're gonna see a little bit of how these perform and then uh, we'll get into some cons, some things that we didn't quite like about the system and then just you know talk about a general overview at the end. So let's see some footage, let's see some tests and we'll be back to talk about some other things in a bit. Okay, variable ND aside, hard stop ND aside, let's talk about some of these other filters that Breakthrough offers, specifically these streak filters. Now these are gonna come in blue, silver, orange, and red. And to be honest, I just do not see the point. I have never been a fan of streak filters myself. Uh, it made sense back in the day if you were trying to emulate some sort of anamorphic thing when it was very, very unattainable, but now there's so many cheap anamorphic lenses out there from Great Joy. I don't know, it just seems better to go buy an anamorphic lens for the same price and just shoot and get actual anamorphic flares. The other thing about the streak filters, I don't know, front versus rear, they kind of all just seem artificial. They don't have the same movement. They don't streak from movement. They just kind of put lines across the frame. I feel like if you were in a very specific situation where you're using something like a, a first gen cook anamorphic non SF or a master anamorphic, something that doesn't flare at all and you just want that every once in a while, then sure, if you're shooting into the sun and you've got a single point source, maybe use one of these to emulate a little bit of that. But I just don't see the use case for them that often when cheap anamorphics exist on the market. But as you're seeing, front or rear streak, it kind of doesn't change. The one nice thing about this, it is pretty easy, is if you do want to rotate, you can go horizontal, vertical, any amount of that. So that part is very fun as well. Another filter that we've got that you can get with this is the circular polarizer that is a about a 0.3 of an ND light loss that you're gonna get from that, but it is really cool. If you do have this on a couple cameras and you're doing some interviews and you don't need ND, I always like to run a polarizer because the polarizer does give you the ability to knock down reflection on skin if you're working with different skin tones, if someone's a little oily, or if you're just getting a lot of like specular bounce from objects in the back. You can see in some of our tests, just the uh, light on the tree in the background is kind of going in and coming out based on us scrolling the wheel, which is something to consider and kind of a fun item to have, but it does take up your one filter stage in the rear. So you kind of get to pick and choose between what you want in the front and what you want in the back of the lens. But all in all, great option to have for a circular polarizer.
Another con that we had is as you get to deeper and thicker, denser stops on the ND system, on the variable ND, we started to notice kind of a, a diagonal pattern of vignetting. And it's not like it went all the way around circular, but a very obvious diagonal. And I feel like at a certain point, you're not gonna like that. I know we ran into this a couple times on set shooting and I just could not figure out what it was until after we got off set and we did a couple tests on some white walls and we could see, but I feel like this is not something that would be enjoyable in post to add some sort of like diagonal linear uh, vignette across the frame to balance that out or add an entire circular vignette to make sure all the corners are darkened the same. It is nice to have a deep stop if you want it. And I didn't find myself really shooting over two on the density throughout the shoot that we were doing. But if you were ever in that situation, you might run into some issues and that might be a deal breaker for some people. But that being said, any sort of cartridge based variable NDs that you have, you're probably going to run into that problem as well. So not necessarily a negative is just a thing that happens, but you will need to take that into consideration when you are shooting deeper, deeper, deeper into your densities on the variable ND. Okay, that is the breakthrough RF to PL mount. I am actually really, really happy that we finally have this and I can see myself using this a ton on set. And in the beginning of this video, we talked about, would it change my perception of shooting on red? And honestly, I think it actually did. This was the first time on set that I didn't feel like the process of working with red and not having the NDs that I was used to didn't slow me down. And I felt like I could keep moving and try new things and not feel rushed. And just the ability to adjust exposure on the fly actually kind of gave me a newfound freedom uh, in the red system that I didn't have before, which is to be honest, I will probably take out the red cameras quite a bit more. I love the image comes out of Raptor and Komodo X and Komodo. There's so many great things and functionality in these cameras that I love. And now with the ability to just go on and have a quick uh, touch of a button to be able to scroll through ND makes it very easy to be run and gun and not carry extra stuff on you all the time or just, oh, we're doing this. You know, any more people are so impatient. Let me try that. Let me see this. Let me do that. This just makes it so quick and so easy to just be like, boom, 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 you're done and you can move on and not waste any time on set. So I will be keeping this. I actually really love it. I think the pros greatly outweigh the cons and I can't wait to start using these on all of our reds here at the studio. So with that, thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. Always trying to do more stuff in here. Thanks for spending a few minutes with us talking about the breakthrough RF to PL mount. We'll catch you next time.